Tell us how you got into uh, to being a nurse in World War One. How did you get into being a nurse in World War One? Yes. Yes. Why did you want to be a nurse? Oh, it's a. I think everybody feels that way when when there's a national danger and they want to, if they can, do something about it. So I just tried to do my part. Where were you a nurse at? Where were you stationed? Can you tell us where you were stationed at? Yes, I was stationed down at Fort Collins. And was that in Alabama? Yes. Can you tell us how long you was stationed there? I'd have to look it up to be sure. I stayed all winter though. I went home in the spring when as soon as the uh, as soon as the war was over, I applied to go home. And it took some time. And finally, they got it through when I went home. Did they have the flu epidemic then? It was just strictly a feeling of patriotism for me. Was there a flu epidemic during the time you served? What? Was there a flu epidemic? Yes, yes, quite serious. So did you help in healing the sick soldiers? Yeah, yes. I I didn't interview them. I just served them. The sick, the people who were sick. I didn't question them. I only anything that I just had to ask them. So I got I got out right away, and what I wanted to do was to get the war over. What kind of medicine did you give the soldiers? It, it, it was a short war, you know. What kind of medicine did you give to the soldiers? Oh, I just uh, um, really, of a morning, I washed her face and hands and neck and ears, combed her hair, and uh, that's, that's about it. You probably gave them a lot of TLC. Yes. What kind of uniform did you have? What kind of uniform did you have, Iva? Oh, uh, it was uh, dark blue. I guess you'd call it dark blue. It, it, it was the regular military color for the soldiers. It was blue. And did you wear a hat? I kept it until, I don't know what happened recently. I don't know whether somebody stole it from my place or what. But something happened to it. I can't find it. What kind of shoes? Did you have military issued shoes? Yes. Can you describe them? Uh, Can you describe your shoes? Well, I don't want to. <laughs> what kind of training did you have to become a nurse? Did you have any special kind of training to become a nurse? Oh my, yes. We turned right, we had our training right on the right in the hospital. On the job training, huh? Yes. 
Right in the hospital. What kind of training was it? What kind of training? What did you do? Well, we uh, sometimes, sometimes we just, the early morning, we would see that there, if they need to shave, we, did, we didn't give the shave, but if they need to shave, we had them get it and, and hair haircut, and we trimmed the nails somewhat like you, you did ours to get any debris that might be under it. And then sometimes, sometimes they were so sick, we had to spoon feed them. Did you see many casualties coming from the battlefield back to your hospital? Iva, did you see very many casualties coming from the battlefield back to your hospital? Yes, yes, we saw quite a few. They, I was telling somebody this morning, I've already told it, about uh, for our recreation, we, some, some of the girls just took walks because they figured that's the best exercise they could get. But I rode horseback while, while, while I had time. When I had a, an hour or so off, by somebody would bring me a saddle of the horse and I'd get in and get on it and ride a while and come back. I got the reputation of being pretty good at it. <laughs> How'd you get that reputation? Well, some of the horses were a little bit wild. Were these army horses? And some, of course, were gentle. They, they judged us by what they thought we were able to take. Were these horses army horses? Yes. Yes, they, they were regular army horses. So would you say you got a spunky horse or a tame horse? Yes. A spunky one? Yes. Yes. My, I, I grew fond of it just like you, like you grow fond of any pet you have. It got so, it got so when I came on to the lot, they nigger, nigger to me. <laughs> they just nigger to me like they were giving me a call. Are you a pretty good rider? Well, they, the boys said I was good. There were a good many older men there who had never ridden to speak our all, and they, they weren't very good, so they couldn't give them anything that was at all skittish. But my horse, when I would start back to camp from where we were, I just kind of let mine have the, have the, it's its own time, and sometimes they'd count, and sometimes they'd count, uh, would, uh, sometimes they just kind of do what we call pacing, you know, what a horse does when it paces. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I enjoyed that. They were, they were very nice. Some of them were quite high spirited, and, and some were not. They, they had different saddles than we have now. They didn't have horns on the saddles. And uh, that seems so funny now. 
I would think I couldn't ride if I didn't have a horn on my saddle. What, what kind of food did you feed the soldiers when they were sick? What kind of food did you feed the soldiers when they well, were sick? Well, we just, the, the, the cooks took care of that and just brought it to us. Sometimes, sometimes they were so sick, we had to spoon feed them. And other times, we just sat there with a tray and cut cut up any meat or anything that needed cutting and just spread the butter on the bread. And of course they had dentists to take care of their teeth. Just like the dentists have now. How many nurses were there down there in Fort Collins? How many other nurses were there in Fort Collins? In that, in that, where I was, there were about, well, about 40 women, I guess. And some of them just never had been inside of a hospital before and took a good deal of training. And others of us grew up in a family whose uh, Older sisters took care of the younger sisters, and we we were used we were used to taking care of kids, and it's just a little, little harder to take care of soldiers than it is a youngster. Did you help train any of these? But they were all very nice. Did you have a part in helping to train the new nurses? Uh, not, not really. We there was there were some things that we had to do in in training. Some of the some of the nurses had never known how to march out to a music, and we usually had a march when we left the hospital and went to camp, and that just ordinary, uh, on ordinary way of keeping the step and looking as intelligent as we could. <laughs> Was there someone barking the orders for marching? Was someone given the orders for marching? Yes, yes, they did. Would that have been a male or a female? I don't think I get you. Was it a male in charge? A man? Yes, yes, there were more men, more men than women. But in the younger group, the one that were in beginner's training, you see, as I was, uh, they, they took a good deal of training. We had to watch our walk and try to, try to look intelligent, try, try not to gaze around or do any thing that would call attention to us. We had blue uniforms. Were you married at this time? I don't think so. Were you married at that time? No. No, I, I was, before I went to camp, I became engaged to this man that I later married, but we, we weren't, we weren't engaged in camp. Were any of the soldiers handsome? Were any of the soldiers handsome? Oh, oh, what'd you say? Were any of the soldiers handsome? Oh, yes. 
Yes, like mo most most of the soldiers need to have if they had time. Were they good looking? Well, they were just like any group of people. You'd look at the bunch and you'd pick out some you thought were good looking and some that were not. Did you have your eye on any of them? Well, yes, I, I was uh, uh, linked with uh, one and expected to be married soon after the war was over. And so I was, but I didn't stay married. It's, it's pretty hard. You live a military life on both sides and then try to live together, and it's a little hard. So, was your husband a soldier later on? Was your husband a soldier? Yes. And you... You married after the war? Yes, after the war. And then shortly after, or quite a while after, you divorced? Yes, I got, yes, I didn't, I didn't stay married over about a year. What was his name? What was his name? Brian. Brian? Well, or is it saying? I don't recall that name. You remember his last name? Do you remember his last name? McMurray. McMurray. I only knew of one. Um, I only heard of one too. And then she had a child that died. Mm -hmm. Were there any other nurses from Missouri that were there? Were there any other nurses from Missouri that were at? Yes, yes, they were quite a quite a bunch from Missouri. Went around from St. Joseph in Kansas City. How did you get from St. Joseph to uh, Camp Collins? Well, that's, a, that's the reason when it came to writing, it was, it was those of us who came from the country that seemed to know how to ride. <laughs> and I had ridden a horse ever since I was big enough to get on. So, so I had good luck. How did you get from St. Joseph, your hometown, uh, to the, Fort uh, McClellan? On the train. Did you like riding the train? Yes. Yes, I like to ride on the train. A couple of World War I nurse pictures in the back seat. Uh -oh. Did you do any work? Around Kansas City before you went down to Fort Collins? One four, one four star. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, did she do any work around Kansas City, St. Joseph area as a nurse before she went to Camp Collins? Did you do any work in the St. Joseph, Kansas City area as a nurse before you went to Fort McClellan? No. No, I just went from went from my high school training right into the Nurses training. Was you teaching school before you went into the army? Yes, I taught two or three years. What grade? Oh, mostly the, mostly the middle grades. Grade school. Of course, we we had. Um, had to learn a lot of military terms, and we had to learn a little bit how to cook, because sometimes it 
came our tub to prepare food even. Iva, I've got a couple of pictures I want you to look at. One is of a bunch of army nurses. Oh, well, I can't see, I can't see them very, uh, very plain in this light. Which one did me? Uh, just, just nurses. It's it's not a picture of you, but it's just a picture of, oh. of nurses. Can you see their blue uniform? Yes. And yes. they have hats on. Yes. Yes, it worked. Caps. Caps, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the uniform looked very nice on most of us. Was you small and petite as you are now? Just about. I I never I I never gained too too much. So you could probably still wear your uniform. It I I think I can. Before I came down here, I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. I I guess somebody had bought it or. Maybe it's packed away in yeah. safekeeping. Yeah. Iva, here's another picture requesting people to join. Can you see that? That we can join? You, I don't know quite what you mean by that. How we have fun? <laughs> well, in the winter, we went skating uh, a good deal, and we actually went out on the hills and coasted. And then my favorite was riding horseback. And I was, it was easy for me. I'd ridden a horse ever since I could remember. So I, I was, I had no problem. That was no problem for me, the riding. Some of the older men had never been on a horse before. They had lived in a place where they didn't have horses. They just had foot soldiers. So, but I, I had done everything I, in the winter time when I was at home, we used to skate and toboggan and do all those outdoor things that well, we had time for. Of course, of course they, they arranged things so we would have Plenty of time to learn drilling and so forth. Iva, the picture you're holding is a recruitment picture. What? It's a recruitment picture. This one? It says, join the Red Cross. Yes. Make this a Red Cross Christmas. Yes. And they, they said, put this in your, in your window with your flag. I don't know whether I did or not, but I kept it. I kept it. I don't know whether I kept it in my window or not. Okay. I can't remember. Okay. Do you remember any Red Cross posters like that? Well, we took lots of pictures. Do you remember Red Cross posters? Yes. People put them up in the window? Yes. Yes, nearly everybody that had any any service people in the, in the hospital had some pictures in the window. They like to advertise their patriotism. Did you hang one of these uh, recruiting pictures in your window? Did I do what? 
Did you hang a recruiting picture in your window? I don't remember that I did. I don't remember. Because we didn't, uh, we used lots of recruiting material, but usually some outside our core did that. Can we ask her favorite time in the military? Or? Yeah, anything that you remember a story from. Okay. Can you tell us maybe one of your favorite times in the military? Well, there were a good many times that we had had fun. We we did a lot of walking. Well, so those of us, those that didn't ride horseback, I really took it out in walking. And that was just about as good for us. But I, I rode horseback myself because I had ridden horseback ever since I was a baby, you might say. My parents had, my parents had horses and lots of times they take us to the barn lot with them and let us just sit on horses and pat them and, and use a brush on them. And so we were very fond of our horses. Iva, if you had it to do all over again, would you join the military? Yes. I would. Can you tell me why? Well, it's just that general feeling of wanting to help. And so, some of it is that we just want to help the war effort. And the other is that you see some that you're real sorry for and I haven't done very well in the military. Okay, and you, you do what you could for them. Sometimes you bring them a flower or a book if they were able to read and just uh, that sort of thing. What was the most difficult thing of being in the military? Well, I think it was that that we had so many rules. We had, we had lots of rules to go by, and we we just better do it. Whatever the rule was, we'd better do it. Well, Iva, did you break any rules? I don't think I did. <laughs> I I was. Very conscientious. My mother was a deeply religious woman, and she, uh, my father died when I was really young, and so she brought us up, and she brought us up very strictly. So we, we knew how to behave before we went in the military. Did you have an identification tag or a bracelet? Did you have an identification tag or a bracelet to wear? A what? An identification tag or a bracelet, like a dog tag or? Well, we had some something. Sometimes we wore a little, just a little ring with a, a or, of emblem on it, and sometimes we wore a silver pin at our collar. That's about all. We did a lot of walking. That's something everybody can do, and so 
so some were afraid to ride, and so I did a lot of walking myself. Did you specialize in anything as a nurse? No, I just took the we just took the general uh, the general courses of uh, of course. Now, when it came to bathing, in that day and age, they, the men, the men did the bathing. We hardly ever bathed the man at that time. We, we just washed his face and neck and ears and, and, and oh, clean our nails once in a while. But if it came for anything like surgical work, a doctor did it. Were there any dances that you attended at the fort? Did you attend any dances at the fort? Very few, because we weren't, we weren't, you talk, they talk about working from sun to sun. Yes, ma'am. And so when we got through with our main job, we were ready to go and read our textbook and go to bed. You probably did a lot of reading in your spare time, being you well, as a teacher. Well, I did, all, I did all the reading that I had time for, but yeah, we, they, if we could, they like for us to take a little short nap of an afternoon. So we were ready for the after dinner work. Sometimes, sometimes we had to feed some of the soldiers. They were wounded in such a way that they had to be fed. Do you remember using a, what they call an endless feeding cup? Do you remember using what is called an envelope feeding cup? What? Do you remember using what they call an envelope feeding cup? I don't remember using that. I think, I think what we used was just an ordinary spoon. Here's a picture of it. Can you see that? No, I can't see it in this light. Okay. You remember the other story she's told you? Um, can I ask her questions sure. about her teaching? And anything. 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 I, in, uh, along with the rest of the work, because some of us thought we might be sent overseas, we took military training, and I learned quite a bit about handling a uh, rifle and a uh, revolver. Which did you prefer? Well, I liked a rifle because you could go out, you could go out in the woods and and give, a, give them more of a chance than you could of trapping them. I never like to trap an animal. What other kind of military training did you take down there? Was it at Fort Collins? Is it Fort Collins Fort or Collins or McClellan? McClellan. No. I think it's Fort oh, McClellan. McClellan. You said Collins, right? Yeah, yeah she said Collins. What other kind of training did you take at, at Fort McClellan? Did I do what? What other kind of training did you take? I just took the ordinary beginner's training. I had, uh, I had been in high school up to the time that, well, just very shortly after, after 
After I got out of high school, I was ready to go to college. And so that all the training I had. Was you uh, one of the top two or three in your class as a student in high school? Yes. I hear you got pretty high scores. Yes, I got I got good scores. I went to went to Central in St. Joseph and I liked school so it was easy for me. Did you do a lot of writing uh, articles or poetry? Well, I didn't write much poetry, but I wrote several things for magazines. Can you tell us about some of those? Well, usually, usually they were one. Well, we like to pick. If we could, we like to pick something comic that soldiers like to smile, and we we would sometimes take a book that had a good many comics in it, and we'd read to the soldiers. They appreciated that. Did you ever write anything for the soldiers? Well. I, I didn't write anything until afterwards. I wrote I wrote several magazine articles afterwards. Do you recall what magazines? Well, Amer American was one, and sometimes just sometimes just something in the daily news. Apart. Sometimes I'd hear. Sometimes I'd write something that a soldier had told me while we were talking together. What happened to those? <laughs> what happened to those? Well, some of them I sent to the paper. And and they always grabbed them up because they felt like that the people that were, were there and working could tell you more. And I don't, I don't think I kept very many of them. I something that happened. Sometimes I'd write something that happened. What the first big picture that we took was a big group, and I happened to, I'm short, you know, I was standing there by a big, well, she wasn't exactly fat, but she was a good deal heavier than I, and I was standing by her in the picture, and when the scaffold fell, it didn't fall very far, but it fell far enough to give us a shake up. Did you get out of the way quick enough, or did it hit no. somebody? Oh, it, it, it hit me, it bumped my head, and bruised my arm, and Things like that. Was that at Fort McClellan? Was that at Fort McClellan? What? Was that at Fort McClellan? A fort? Uh, yes. Yeah. What was it like the day the war ended on November 11th? What was it like the day the war ended on November 11? Oh, it was quite hilarious some some people who had freedom and were uh, drinking characters anyhow took too much whiskey that day uh, the rest of us just took walks and 
But that, that, I mean, if we weren't going out on a date, well, the main thing we did was to just do our work. Iva, what was it like when the war ended? Oh, it was hilarious. What was funny about the war ending? Well, I didn't mean it was hilariously funny. It just was repair, hilarious for people to watch. They got out on the street and made noises and... Because they were happy the war was over? Yeah. That's what you mean? Yeah. Okay. What did the inside of the hospital look like where you worked? What did the inside of the hospital look like where you worked? Well, it was just a, an ordinary room with good, be good beds. They had, had good beds for us to sleep on. What about the soldiers? Well, they had good beds too, but they had they had to move around sometimes. Sometimes they had to take their bed and and camp just for practice. How many uh, hospital beds do you think were at Fort McClellan? Oh, I don't remember. It was a good sized building. Was it? Was it just one building where they took care of the uh, soldiers at? Yes, mainly. But if, the, but if the women got sick, they were in a different ward. They were usually they usually were a separated ward, so that the men were in one part. Now, I don't know whether it was that in all hospitals or not. That is the hospital where I was. You said you went out on dates. How, how often was that? How often did you go out on a date? Oh, we, so, some of the boys who were the nicest boys didn't have means to take us out on anything that cost very much because so many of them had homes at home that needed help and they they sent part of their paycheck home so they didn't spend much we took walks how much did you get paid a month how much did you get paid a month? Oh, about somewhere under someone sometime something under twenty dollars a month for general practice. Did you think that was enough money back then? <laughs> well, we didn't think of it much in the way of money. Really, really we had a great feel of, of pride to think that we could help. And that, that was the main thing we, that's the main thing we went in for, so we could help. You didn't do it for the money. You did it so you could help someone, right? Well, so we could help our country. Yeah. You're quite a lady, you know that? Yes. <laughs> Were there Missouri soldiers down there that you met? Were there Missouri soldiers that you met? What? Did you meet any Missouri soldiers? Oh, yes. I, I met several, several Missouri soldiers. Do you remember any in particular that strikes a bell? Well, the one particularly that I knew when I was teaching before I went into the service, I wrote, 
I wrote letters to him, and he, he wrote letters to me. Let's change the subject a little bit. Can you tell me what the best experience you had as a teacher? The best uh -huh. or the worst? Well, you can tell me you can tell me one of both. Well, usually I I taught mostly before I went I taught in country school or in a small town. And there were always children that desperately needed help. And I don't know whether you can remember back to your first school days or not, but if a lot youngster starts into a big school and doesn't have any brothers or sisters with him, it's lonesome. So what would you do to help them feel more comfortable? Well, what I tried to do was to do a good job of teaching. I thought that was the best way to make them comfortable. And some were unusually smart, and some, of course, were unusually dumb. So did you help and give special attention to those those less fortunate? I didn't quite get you. Did you give special attention to the ones who weren't catching on as quick? Well, I had to. If I hadn't, they wouldn't have learned anything because the schools were crowded. Is there uh, any child that sticks out in your mind as uh, one of your favorites? Oh, se several. The, uh, the daughter or the son of my parents where I boarded was a very nice boy. And I, when I was teaching, I drove a horse and buggy <laughs> to school, and I let them ride home with me sometimes. Well, they probably enjoyed riding in the, their teacher's horse and buggy. Yes, yes, they did. That probably made them feel very special. Yes, it did. It, it, made, it made them feel special. Sometimes they want to crowd in too many, but I wouldn't let too many get in at once. You remember the names of the schools that you taught at? Can you can you tell me some of the names of the schools that you taught at? Well, mo most of the most of the schools were named for the city where they were, like in Saint Joseph. They, St. Saint Joseph, why we had St. Joseph schools that just named that after the city. And then we had high schools in the city, and we had grade schools, just, you know, the ordinary grade school where a bunch of little kids went. Was one named Buchanan High School? Yes, yes, we had several named that because Buchanan was one of the big counties there. What is the least favorite thing about teaching school? Oh, well, it's, it's it's that you don't have very much freedom. You, you go to school and they, 
They have changed teachers a lot on account of some going to war. And some of the teachers are not very good. And some of the principals are crazy. Did you have to whip any of the students? I, so, so it is. I, I never thought that they teachers were as helpful as they should be for teachers because you, you send a little kid to school and maybe has to go by himself to a big school, he can feel awfully lonesome. Did you ever have to discipline any children with a SWAT? Well, yes. I. I applied my hand a time or two, and I I had a little I had a little paddle, not that long, that I used to give them a swat on the butt <laughs> <laughs> if they were misbehaving. What's something that one of the kids did to deserve a SWAT? Well, I get into a fight on the school ground, and that's one thing. And some, some kids are just arrogant. You wouldn't think that kids of school age would have enough um, that they would that they wouldn't be polite. Of course, my mother made us throw the mark at home when we went, and I I didn't I didn't make any trouble for a teacher. Not not really, because if she found out about it, there was a whole. I had to suffer for it. <laughs> she always said that no matter how hard it was for you to learn, it was not hard for you to learn how to behave. So, we, That's a pretty good philosophy. Yes. What was your mother's name? What was your mom's, what was your mother's name? Our, our name before she was married to my father was Flowers. She came from North Carolina, and my father was a uh, Boston, not a Boston, but just a, a farmer. He was just a farmer. What was her first name? He, what was your mother's first name? Lorena. Lorena? New New Rena and you. And you. New Rena Flowers. Okay. And your dad's name? Hezekiah. Hezekiah. He was a he was a Bible name. They did a little Bible naming for children. Uh, the man. Oh, like they named them such names as Henry and Isaac and so forth. And your your father's last name was Tamil. Okay. He it was he from Boston? No, he was from he was from that area of the country to start with. He was born somewhere in the east and came to live in Missouri. He married my Sister, or my, my, married my... Your mother. Mother in, in the little town where we lived. Did you have any brothers in the military? Did you have any brothers in the military? I, yes, I had one that practically ran away just as the war started. He, he he was very adventurous, so he 
and the hired man. We had a hired man, and he, my brother was very really younger, so they both worked in the field, and my my father was old and kind of crippled up. It was his second marriage. So the boys did a good deal of work at home and at school too. They were they were pretty well behaved. Did they did your brother go to the go into the military? He he went well, before the war was over, he he was in the military, but he was going just to a country school. He was the oldest one I was, and and he he went to a country school. He was very bright, though. Are you the youngest in your family? Yes. So did mom and dad have you uh, give you special favors because you was the baby of the family? <laughs> well, I couldn't notice it. Who was your brother's name who was in the army? What was your brother's name who was in the army? Charles. Be Charles. He made a good soldier. Did he go overseas? Did he go overseas? Yes, he went to the Philippines. Did uh, his being in the army have anything to do with you becoming a nurse? Did his becoming... What? Did, because he was in the army, did that have anything to do with you wanting to go in and be a nurse? No, I don't think so. It's just you know, anything like a war starts, you get a wave of uh, sympathy and and a desire to help whatever you can. What did your mother or your father think about you becoming a nurse? I'll tell you about that. Tell us what mom and dad thought about you going in the military and being a nurse. Well, my mother didn't think much of it. My father died shortly afterwards. But it was his second marriage. Uh, he died, but uh, my mother didn't think very much of it. But after I came home and she was sick and I gave her uh, my benefit of what I had learned, she thought it was fine. <laughs> She, she said, she said I was as good as the doctor, which of course wasn't true. How many brothers and sisters did she have? There were six in your family? Yes. Did you have any sisters? Yes, I had two sisters, one older, or both older, both older than I. And, uh, the younger sister had a kind of a hard time at school. She she didn't learn as fast as as we other kids did, but she what she did learn, she learned well. Were any of your sisters in the uh, nurses? Were were any of your sisters a nurse? Well, I was. I I was. I was. I just jumped at the chance of getting in the army when, as soon as I had the opportunity, and I stayed there till the war was over. I could have stayed to finish up, but I didn't. I just. Got right back into the old country way. Were you looking forward to going overseas in the army? Were you looking forward to going overseas in oh, the army? Oh yes. 
But you didn't go overseas, did no. you? No. No. I trained. We trained in schools outside. But we learned lots anyhow. Do you remember uh, rationing or liberty bonds? Do you remember rationings or liberty bonds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us something about that? I, not the present guy, can think anything. I put, I put all, all the time I had in reading. And school was very much easier for me for some reason than the rest of my family. My my brother next to me was smart enough, but he wasn't eager enough. He didn't apply himself like you did, huh? No. Were all of your brothers and sisters from your father's second marriage? Yes. They, they, uh, my older brother, I think I told you that he and the hired man ran away when they were quite young. He ran away. My brother, my mother, used to keep the change in the bureau drawer. We had two square bureaus, and each of them had a drawer. And one of those was where my father always put his change first. So. My younger brother and this hired man, one evening when nobody was paying attention, they got into the change first and got them, I don't know how much money, but some, and away they went, all the way to Texas. All the way, to, did they get in trouble when Dad got a hold of them? Well, when he when he came home, when they came home, they you know, never heard from from them while they were gone. But when they came home, they came to the barn and just called up in the hay life and hay light and went to sleep until morning. And the younger brother come hiking up so eager and scared and said that Charlie and Tom were in there. So my mother went down and talked to them and Dad was pretty mad as a hired man and he, he wouldn't ask him in the house. But mother brought him to the house and because she thought her pay the hat her hat she thought maybe the hat and some of his clothes were infected. And they had just slept everywhere while they were gone. So she burned she burned part of his clothes. And they bought others so that he had good. And shortly afterwards, he came down with a typhoid, and they didn't punish him much because he had typhoid fever pretty serious for a while. And the hired man, uh, the hired man uh, was younger. I guess he was younger than my son, my brother, 
But they ran off together. They thought it was a good trick. Can you remember your very first Christmas? Can you remember your very first Christmas? No. I was I was born in March and when Christmas when Christmas came around I wasn't big enough to even talk very much. I just mostly jabbered <laughs> until a second Christmas. But we we made a lot of Christmas. Tell us about at our house. Can you tell us about that Christmas? You mean last Christmas? Well, your the you, your second Christmas. Well, when you was two years old. Yeah, Do you remember anything? I remember when I was three, okay. a little bit. <laughs> and we we um, went through the stage of hanging up our stockings and being very secret about it. And my parents worked awfully hard, but they took time to go to town and buy a few little extras to put in our socks. Okay, kind of socks. And as soon as, as soon as Christmas was over, my young, my oldest brother was just in his teens and he ran away with another boy and Going back to that story. joined the army because my father died about that time and left my mother to cope with kids. Uh, I think your mother did a fantastic job with you. Well, thank you. She, she was very strict. And if we told her to do anything, she'd better, we'd better do it. Boy, if we didn't, there was a little peach tree switch that she'd break off and cut around our legs scared us worse than hurt. So we, the ones of us who stayed at home, minded pretty, pretty well. What kind of toys did you have? What kind of toys did you have? What'd you say? What kind of toys did you have? Oh, I'll, we had, mother would get us little books that we could read or that she could read to us. And I think my love of reading came from the time I was the youngest one. So she'd read, she'd read to us. And she got, she got the book that she should have given to me and she gave it to my next older brother and she, my next older brother didn't care a thing for it. She just flipped through the pages, not bother with the words. What was the name of that book that you thought you should have had? It's, it was called, I believe it was called Parents Assistant. Something like that. My, when we broke up housekeeping, my brother, who was the first to get married, wanted that book to keep, and my mother gave it to him. So he has it sometime, somewhere in his things. Did any other of your brothers serve in the military? Did any of your other brothers serve in the military? Yes, well, you know, I did. It was the army. And my oldest brother, soon after, soon after my father died, my my old uh, oldest brother was at a stage where he 
wasn't very obedient. And in a way, he was obedient too. But he, he ran away and went to the army and stayed during the duration of the Philippine War. And the rest of us scratched around the best we could. What year was your father born? What year was your father born? My father? Um, let me see. I guess, I guess it was, I guess it was about 18, I'm not sure, but I believe it was about 1880. It was his second marriage. And the older children. What, ha what happened to the first wife? She died. Can you remember anything else about World War I that you would like to tell us? Can you remember anything else about World War I that you would like to share with us? Well, all my friends were very interesting. I, so I don't know that there was anything that was more interesting than another, except that when we were having our first picture made in school, it was a, it was a grade school, and I was, I was in the first grade at the time, and I wasn't very, uh, very great on memory at that time. But we had a rather hard time for my father had a big farm, but when the oldest brother ran off and went to the army, it left her with just a bunch of little kids. And she she wasn't a very good manager. So we had some difficult times. But we got along. Everybody just kind of pitched in and made it through it, huh? Yes. What's your secret of a long life? Can you share with us your secret to long life? No, I just, I was always interested in being healthy. And so, well, what I learned about health at school or anywhere else, I tried to remember. So, I made good grades. I guess I made the best grades of anybody in our school. And so when time came to go to high school, I got uh, I got a, I guess you call it a prize. They gave free tuition for anybody that made what they called honor grades. And I was just little and didn't know much, but but I made the honor grades, and so when I went to high school, I made good grades. Tell us why do you think you've lived as long as you have? Well, I don't know. Maybe just living on a farm and taking taking whatever events happened. My mother was a very poor manager. My father left a big place, a big farm, but it didn't do my mother much good because she didn't know what to do with it. But we had, 
We had much to have, make a living. So, McGarry, McGarry. So I got very interested in school. I was the youngest one. Iva, tell me one thing that you would like to uh, share with all the little children. One thing in life that you would tell them if you could. Well, that'd be pretty hard to do. There are lots of there are lots of things that my mother was always trying to teach us to do the right thing. She taught us honesty and truthfulness above others. If if any of us ever told her something that wasn't true, it wasn't good for us. So when when I got through the common grade school, I went to Central High in St. Joe and made good grades. Share with us one thing that you would tell the children growing up in the world today. What kind of advice would you give them? Well, I would give them to the best of my ability that how valuable it was to become a reader and a reader of the right type. And we didn't have any of the wrong type <laughs> at home. So I I am pretty sure of reading the right kind of stuff, mostly just primary books with stories. That pretty well covers mine, but anything you want okay, to ask, um, my, they gave, they gave the nicest book to my next older sister, and she didn't give a hoop for it. <laughs> she'd turn, she'd turn through and not even try to read the pages. She'd look at the pictures and ask some questions. And then she'd lay it on the shelf, and I would get it and follow my mother around while my mother was washing dishes or making bread or whatever. And she always would bend down and tell me a word. So she, she helped me get a good start. So Iva, besides uh, reading when you're young, what else is important to have growing up as a child? Well, it was my mother and my parent, of course, as long as he lived, but it was my mother being very strict with us. If, if the time came when she had to question us about something, we just jolly well better tell her the truth. <laughs> so we learned truthfulness. Did you have the did you have times where you shared the Bible, God's word? Well, my mother my mother read the Bible to, daily, and when we were at the right age to listen, why, we listened to her. And when the boys ran away from home and we were all so distressed, for the first time in my life, I was little, but in the first time in my life, when bedtime came, everybody knelt down 
at their towns or whatever they were sitting in, and the little ones listened, and the old ones said a prayer. And I, I think that's pretty good for us. Go ahead. Okay. See you later, Teresa. Bye-bye. You guys have a good day. I sure will. But my oldest brother was what you call wild. See, he got all the old big detective stories and things like that that he read. And he read very well. But he didn't spend time on some of the good books that he should read. Iva, I notice you have a, a few tears. Are those tears of joy or of remembering your childhood? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was the youngest one. And so when my brother came back from the army, he ran away and joined the army after our father died. And when he came back, he he was surprised to see that I could read. <laughs> Iva, do you realize how young you are? Well, I I don't know. Well, how about if I told you that you were 105 years young? Well, you tell me wrong. <laughs> I'm 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 only nine. Oh, let me see. Oh, now I'm I'm 110. 110? Well, you were born in 1892, right? Yeah. And this year is 1997. Well, that's how old I am. 105. <laughs> <laughs> give me, from woman to woman, give me some advice for the rest of my life. Well, I think that for all of us, we should take more time to think before we speak. That's, that's very important, to learn, to learn to think before we talk. Anything else you want to add to that? Oh, I could sit and philosophize for no telling how long, but I was the youngest child, and my oldest brother said I was neglected, and maybe I was, but I was too young to know I was neglected. You know, I think you're a very special lady. You've taught me a lot. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what I told you. How about, can you recall one story about when you was in the military riding your horse back to camp and it took off real fast? Yeah. And the, the guys at the corral when you got back they thought you could ride really well. <laughs> and yeah. what did they say? Well, this one fellow, he was about middle aged, I guess. He told he told me, I wish I could ride like you can. Didn't he say, gee, she can ride good? Yes. Did you tell him that you was just hanging on? No. Didn't tell him that part, huh? I, I didn't tell him anything. I just told him that, that I had written 
Everybody gets their pictures. Mostly barebacks at home. She's getting hungry now. Yeah, probably. It's, this is almost done anyway. Um, I've got mine to cover, but anything you want to put on the tape, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to add. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good, I think. Yeah, very well. Mm -hmm. Do you have a thought for the day you can end us with? <laughs> well, I have different thoughts at different times. Usually, when I go to bed and can't go to sleep, I think about things that I wish I had done. What's one thing you wish you would have done? That, that I wish I hadn't done. Oh. Well, maybe we shouldn't talk about them, huh? No. What's one thing you wish you would have done? Well, one of it was that I learned to read. I learned, I think, I think I was the best reader in the family. I don't know for sure. But, but I did very well in reading in school. What's one thing that you wish you would have done? If you can do one thing in the whole world, what would you do? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'd change a good many things. Where would you start? I'd have to start a way back, but I, but I'd, it'd be, it'd be too, too far for me to go, you know, when a child is small and the youngest one in the family, and my oldest brother said I was neglected all the time. Iva, what would you change about the world today? Well... I just do the best I can for me and for the people I deal with, and that does pretty well. Did you ever smoke? I do. I do the best that I know. As as I grew up, I did the best I knew. My mother taught us it is always best to tell the truth. And I don't ever remember telling her something that wasn't true. Did you ever smoke a cigarette? I don't, I don't think I ever took one into my mouth. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. We're about done. Can you top off the day with one comment? What'd you say? Said we're about finished. Can you top off the day with one comment? Well, I'm, I'm just glad that I've stayed as healthy as I have been. I haven't always been healthy. I wasn't healthy as a child, but I just grew into health. And I, I'm very happy that I have had good health. And so are you happy right now in life? Yes. Fairly, fairly happy. The happy, happy is the average. You probably wish you was back riding horses, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Iva, we love you very much here. You know that? Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Get these lights here. Yeah. Turn them off so I have food around a little bit. Here's a release slip. You might want to look over and explain to her. That this is where she'd print. This is where she'd sign. Okay. Yeah, I hope so.
we'll get it on the yeah okay throw this out i'll mark that we get it spelled and throw it down it be on the Iva, this is a release form for this interview. Thank you. I'm going to need your signature for this release form. Is that okay? What is? Read the release that you've written for me. Okay. What did you say? It says that you give permission to the Department of Natural Resources Jefferson Landing State Historic Site, Missouri State Museum, to reproduce, publish, and duplicate the oral history for contribution to the scholarship of Missouri's history. Thank you. So you will be willing to sign this? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think I should sign it. It's your word. Well, the hey. interview is with you. Do you give them permission to reproduce it? Maybe write a news article about this? I think it would be all right. I don't, I don't know. I've never been written up in the newspaper. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> You've been written up many times in the past five years. Yeah. Have you seen my, have you seen my things? I'll tell her that. Iva, uh, they're going to put your picture in the Capitol building. Oh my goodness. I think, I haven't, I haven't been crying, but it seems like there are tears standing in my eyes. You're right, but I believe those are tears of joy. Well, I'm getting along very well. I've, I've worked hard. You have worked very hard in your life. You're very deserving of any acknowledgement you receive. Yes, I've, I've worked. And you've helped a lot of people. Well, I've, I've helped a good many people. When anybody is sick, why? Because I had had some knowledge of taking care of sick people, I helped. I've helped a good many sick people. Iva, can you sign your name for me? I don't know whether I can see or not. Well, I can't see very well. I'll put the pen on the line. I give it to you. Give me in my hand. <laughs> now where's the line? Right here. No, nope. right there. She's a, wait a minute. Go down here a little bit farther. She can't see the line very well, but she's doing. Anywhere there's fire. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it's Iva McMeekin? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Can you see it's Iva McMeekin? You might want to print it up there. Can I print it? Yeah, go ahead. And she might want to Xerox it, but just because of the scholarship, what it says for her. But... What exactly the scholarship part? Well, it goes on the file. Okay. So if we ever did an exhibit on teachers, say, well, we got part of that. That's why I ask a lot of other questions besides what we're working on. Okay. If somebody wants to come and research World War One, these interviews are available for people to go through once we get them typed up. Okay. 